a girl is absurd. Like what? No, what was like, with the freaking reference to Aladdin? Like I, I didn't even get that. I, th- I remember like, sitting crazy. in freaking Bayard, my old dorm, um, and I wasted my time. I made it seven minutes of my life to watch that video. I like it was so. Stuff. She's like creative. She's out there, and she doesn't really offend anybody. There were no crosses in it or anything. Like mm-hmm. she says exactly what she wants to, but she's pretty like. But I she like knows her. where she's, to touch and where it's not. Crazy too. though, like Wikipedia, this all this. She has done several interviews where she's just like, you know, when I was a child and my father would beat my mother, I would create an alternate personality, and that's who Roman Zelonsky is. Mm-hmm. All these people that she raps and are like, oh, this is whatever, draw Zelonsky, whatever it is. There's a personality she created when she was little to escape from abuse. That kind of sounds like schizophrenia. I don't know. I'm not. I a think it's, well, I it's like, it's like self-created schizophrenia. I think people kind of forget that yeah. she is a very theatrical person, and they forget that she went yeah. to freaking Laguardia yeah. High School, which is in New York City, which is a school that I was going to go to for performing arts. She. This is who she, she is. is. She acts yeah. like. I mean. And what yeah. about um? What's She's her name? She's scary. Um, I like her. The stuff. other crazy <laughs> one, the Lady Gaga? Gaga. Yeah, Lady Gaga. Like. She's the same thing. They're artists. They that, express yeah. themselves. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's why we get into them because they yeah. they put themselves out there. And that's why we let them like inspire us. They open up in like other way in ways that most artists or most people in general wouldn't allow themselves. Yeah. Would you, I mean would you say I that people oh go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean would you say that Nicki Minaj is like the number one female rapper? Well what other female rapper? Because she's the only one of him. Oh. Okay, yeah, wait, 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 wait. Honey cocaine. Everyone needs to be on the lookout for that one. I know. Oh, right. There's like what? There's she's gonna explode just like Jeremy Lin did. Has one song. She's Asian. Quayshawn. What? Wait, Lil Kim is still like the Gucci Gucci. Gucci. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Missy Elliott is a great. Yeah, I mean Missy not doing much right now. Well, actually, she just came out with a song with J Cole. Nobody's she perfect. She did. She did. But Cole, yeah, uh, thank thank uh, you for bringing her up. I think she's yeah. perfect. You know, Missy producer. Elliott's Everything mm-hmm. like she's on top of it. it. She's like a it? she's like a or female P Diddy. Yeah, she's a really yeah. woman. Nikki, she's cool. I mean, what do you bring? To Nikki's me? kind of. I feel like Nikki's like just schizophrenia and yeah. wigs. She's of she's colors. just she's like a really she's like a she's just really creative and out Thank there. Thank you, Elliot, for telling like, all girls that they can wear pink hair whenever. I think I think I, I think it's a free country. The <laughs> Nicki Minaj that we see now, the commercial Nicki, is not what we appreciate, but definitely the old Nicki that used to be, you know, if you look at her, you, on YouTube and look at her old videos, like she was, I mean, I like, I mean, she's good for mainstream, but before, I mean, of course, no one wants to hear the, um, you know, the rough, ragged, and raw, and I can, like, I'm going to do this with my, you know, all of the, like, the rough things that, like, for example, Little Kim was promoting when she was, you know, she's fighting with Nicki Minaj right now, aren't they? Little Kim and Nicki Minaj. Stupid it's, hoe. It's, it's, yeah, it's just like Stupid the Drake hoe. versus the comedy. What happened? Thing. The song "Stupid Ho" is yeah. like really for um, Little Kim, and it's kind of like I guess feeding off of their beef because it's, people kind of say that she's trying to emulate Little Kim and do the same things, and she's not original. Little Kim is so cute. They probably had sex. But they always, it's always the older yeah. generations coming at the younger generations. Like think about the whole Drake and Common thing. Always the older ones coming, like trying to put them down and stuff. Yeah. I feel well, like. see that was different. Drake and Common is different. Yeah, that's way. Yeah, that's way to me. I don't. But I mean, I've like heard of it, but no. the same thing happened with Jay Z. Think- Lil Wayne, right? It was Jay Z and Lil Wayne. Uh, Lil Wayne, oh, it's like Fifty someone. Cent and Jay-Z. Kanye too. I remember that. Mm. that Speaking of Fifty Cent, he made a comment on Nicki Minaj talking about how she was like basically the best female rapper out right now. He respects mm. her. He feels like everything she does is great. Isn't that the rapper <laughs> Since that went to when jail did we for, care like, about what Fifty Cent? Said? Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. I don't like Again, yeah, irrelevant. Right. But okay. He had a hard way to get where he is. And he makes condoms shot. now. I don't know if I want to buy those though. Well, Nick, Rick Santorum like that, times, but I think it's good. Maybe they have holes in them too, but nobody knows. Well, Safe sex is the best. That's sex, all the so. hot topics we have for today. Up next, we have hot poet Brittany Barker. Stay tuned. My grandmother sits on the couch next to her husband. She says to him, I love you with everything that I have, but I need you to look in the mirror. He says to her, mirrors are the most honest. Sometimes I do not want to be told the truth or be reminded of how less of a man I am when it comes to you. Ever since I was young, my grandmother has always been a raving beauty. I've always admired the pavement of her skin, her groundedness, how highway illustrates the crossroads of her veins. She knows how to play driver and passenger at the same time, tired of being backseat lover, my grandmother's lover. Sits there like time. She loves him, 
But every time he touches her, she twitches like the switch of an old grandfather clock. Grandfather, look at her hands. She is tired of molding herself into enough woman for you. Didn't your mother tell you that a woman's hands tell stories? My grandmother's hands narrate. I remember her saying that when she and grandpa first met, he was an abandoned scaffold, that if it wasn't for the concrete of her hands, he wouldn't be the skyscraper he is today. Today, he can barely look at her can barely see how her skin has faded into the shade of a dying sunrise, can barely see that she's been fighting the storm and herself. She's been rain cloud and heavy wind since 98 and way too familiar with the Bible's verses on matrimony. There's no such thing as divorce in this family. We are tough women. Our hands are made of stone. We never let go. I, I can recall her saying, but I tell her, that grandpa needs to make himself into something more than a broken marital bond. You are too old to be chasing a rolling stone, grandma. The only man that can love you the way you deserve to be is God, can't you see? Your husband doesn't appreciate you, leave him, please. Believe me when I say that an 18 year old girl has no say in the love life of her grandparents. I watch as he folds her into misery, folds her into a gasping shade of gray as he reminds her that she isn't summer enough to warm his winters, that his winters would be better if she could bear a son. I've been dying to tell him that a woman like her would rather give him the moon, but some women don't appreciate the moonlight. I never saw a woman fight the storm like she did. The last time I spoke to her, she said, when you love someone, you will never let them go. He is my husband. I will never let him go. My hands are made of stone. Grandma, your hands are made of stone. But make your heart more like your hands. You are too good for him. I think you're good. That performance was dope. I really liked your poem. I mean, why did you guys choose Exiled? The name Exiled, I'm sorry. Um, well, the name Exiled came from our other member, David Cruz. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a toss up between a couple of names. Mm -hmm. And uh, we kind of sort of settled on Exiled because he had a really good explanation. Mm -hmm. um, he basically just said that most uh, prophets or scientists that have actually stated the truth or brought or shed light to the truth mm -hmm. were exiled and shunned, and he used Galileo as a perfect example. Mm -hmm. And we were like, you know what? That run, run with it, because we do speak the truth, and if you hear our poetry, it definitely comes from the heart, and it's just something that we actually all kind of see ourselves as exiled from society. I mean, so... I know you guys are a spoken word poetry group. Tell me what the difference is between spoken word and any other type of poetry that at least Carlisle and Dickinson have seen so far. What's like so unique about spoken word? Well, I think the difference is mostly performance-wise. Mm -hmm. um, when you think about poetry, you, you think about poetry for the page, and you think about, uh, I guess, like taking your time or seeing like roses are red, violets mm -hmm. are blue. But when you think about um, spoken word, it's more of a performance. Um, you can write a regular poem, but it's all about the way you deliver it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that changes the way it affects the crowd. So spoken word is like the performance of it, not necessarily what the content is? is uh, well, right? it does. Content is always mm -hmm. key in any poem. You always want to get something out of um, a piece that you read, but mostly for spoken word. Um, I think both of them are e on equal le levels, performance and content. So you got, have you guys had like prior experience in spoken word like at home or here? Like, How did you guys get into spoken word poetry? Um, I just kind of sort of... Uh, watch this movie. I think it's called Slam. Um, the basketball movie? No, I think it's, it's okay. this other movie that I watched I it in it high school. Yeah. And um, my English teacher kind of sort of, yeah, this is the genre that people write poetry. And I was like, oh, that's actually interesting. And I started writing a little bit in high school and then I stopped in college. And then there was a spoken word group here called Silent Poets. And I kind of always saw them perform. Mm -hmm. And I never really performed with them just because I never thought I was up to par. And just that was my experience and then I started writing again I just kind of sort of I like fell in love and then this girl broke my heart and I was like and I started writing poetry and then I spit it to one of the actual members in uh, Sign of Poets and they were like wow you could write like wow and I was like oh I didn't ever knew so that was my experience what about you and I started well I was writing poems in middle school and I started doing spoken word poetry in high school and mm -hmm. it was um one day I came home from school and I was watching MSG and I saw the Nick Poetry Slam. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, like I want to be a part of this. And after I saw it, I YouTube some of the poets that were a part of it and they're a part of an organization called Urban Word NYC. Mm -hmm. And um, after seeing that, I signed up for the workshop, started going there. And at first I was intimidated, but I got comfortable and I got good feedback on my work. And that's how I really got started. Yeah. I mean, aren't you a finalist for this year's Nick Poetry Slam? Yes, I am. And when, when can we look out for that? Um, well, the slam is on March 8th. Okay. Uh, I know a lot of people won't be able to make it, but 
it airs, a documentary airs um, for every slam. Um, most likely it'll be out next year around the beginning of school. So, uh -huh. yeah, I'll let you know. All right, so how can students get involved in Exiled? Um, we're current, we were just uh, currently working on uh, our auditions. Um, if anybody, we have auditions uh, March 4th, 8 p.m., Basler uh, Room 208, which is upstairs, is like the small auditorium in Basler. Uh, and that's kind of sort of how people could get involved in Exile. We're opening it up to the rest of the group. People have seen our performances, know what we're kind of about, and we just want to see what the Dickinson community could offer to our group. So, like, yeah. Okay, so okay, what can we expect next? I know you guys had a Valentine's Day event, but what can we expect next from Exile? What, like, what's, up, what's next for you guys? Well, obviously you can expect more of us, more of our um, poems. We don't really have, we didn't really have that much time to um, work on what we really wanted. Mm -hmm. And initially we wanted to do one woman, one man show. So that'll be next year, spring semester, mm -hmm. I mean fall semester. Um, but we'll do poetry collectives and I guess like make a survey of what everyone wants to hear, like what topics mm -hmm. do people want to hear about. Cool. And whatever it is, you make a request and yeah. we can do it for you guys. We're always brainstorming. We always love people's opinion. Like uh, my roommate came up with this crazy idea. He was like, oh, how about March Madness? I have no idea how that works into poetry, but that's a good idea. Like we love things like that. Like people just coming up to randomly like, hey, have you, can you guys try to talk about this? Or like, you know, just things like that that people want to hear. So that's something that I feel like it's important. People communicating to us like what they want to hear because we're here well, for them. In addition to things that people want to hear, I know everyone wants to hear about Chris Brown and Rihanna. What do you guys think? Stop it, bro. Stop. <laughs> I mean, come on. The birthday tweet, the two remixes, which I, I, I want to quote him correctly. In the song, he says, girl, I want to F you right now. I've been missing your body. What? Like, wow. Well, I think that Chris Brown messed up the birthday cake. She gave a little <laughs> snippet on the album and I thought that she should have bodied the album by herself but mm -hmm. I mean the song by herself but she put Chris Brown on it she messed it up but if they want to be together then they can the past is the past even though a man putting his hands on a woman isn't right mm -hmm. it's her life and it's a lot of women who've done the same thing so mm -hmm. she is an icon I kind of figure and she should think about that but again it's her life and also I would like to say um, like I agree with Brittany that a woman should never be touched but honestly that's their relationship that's something that I hope younger kids seeing this don't think that it's okay mm -hmm. for a man to touch a woman and then mm -hmm. for them two years later to just kind of sort of resolve their problems through a damn song. Yeah. Like, that's not cool. Because that doesn't look good um, to the public. Honestly, to me, it's like I would never have my little cousin watch Rihanna and Chris Brown fight and then two years later have them make up and be like, oh, yeah, forget about him beating her up like that. Like, because she really got beat up, like severely got beat up. And for them to reunite on a song called Birthday Cake. Cake yeah. is, it just says so much about like our generation and just like what people really care about, like sex. That's it. Point blank period. Well, I mean, thank you guys for your opinion. Thank you guys for coming thank to the hot seat. Um, and this is the end of our first episode of the hot seat. We thank you guys for coming, for watching, and we'll see you next time.